right, so I've had a broken door handle here for quite a while. This is not an original Toyota. This is actually a eBay one. Um, really, I only bought the eBay because Toyota had gotten to charging like $75 for these, which is ridiculous. I could get two on eBay for like 30 bucks. Um, however, the quality of the eBay is even worse than the quality of the Toyota ones. Toyota ones do break over time, but mostly because South Florida has so much sunlight, so much UV, and these are not particularly UV resistant, which is amusing because the dashboard seems to be made out of something that's like immune to the sun, period, and doesn't crack on like any other dashboard I've ever seen. But that interior door handle plastic, on the other hand, from the factory is not good, and this aftermarket one really isn't much better. You can see it's cracked in the bottom and the handle comes out. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. All you'll really need for that is a Phillips head driver of some sort, a drill or a manual screwdriver. Both are fine. I'm going to use a drill. Take out the screw. Now, these are clipped into the door. So in order to remove it, you actually have to slide it in a direction. And I want to say that's forward. And let's see. Am I right? Looks like it. There you go. So yeah, you see that these things have these clips. So kind of when they're installed in here, you push them back. So they hook in. So you push it forward once you undo the screw and that allows it to come out. Now normally you would have the latch attached here to the lever that actually acts on the lock. In this case, it was broken. But it's held on by this type of clip. Now in the past on the forums, I did see where someone was like, oh, you can't remove those without breaking them. That's actually false. You turn this here, this is a little clip. You go like that, this turns, and then it slides out this way, right? And that's how you do that. Now I'll take my new door handle and install it. And that's just as easy as taking out the old one. Here's the brand new door handle. This is a factory Toyota. Let's go ahead and pull this out. So you'll see that just like the other one, you have the clips that hold onto the door. You have this clip here that holds onto the lever that actuates it. They stopped making this in the proper color because I'm pretty sure that this used to be a lighter gray, but whatever, it'll age in the sun and lighten up, I'm sure. Um, in any case, I just want a functional door handle. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna have this like that. We're gonna slide the clip into this hole. All right, so let's, let's grab this lever and kind of work it in to the handle. It can be a little bit bothersome to do. Um, you can just tug on it and that'll help. So there it is, it's in. Make sure it goes down all the way, then turn the clip onto it. Easier said than done when your fingernails are short. Try it again. Of course, having a flathead screwdriver would help here. So let's try that actually. So I've got this down. I'll use my flathead to turn this little clip. And there it goes. And now we pop this in and slide it backward and we come back in with the handle screw and we just pop that guy right in here and that's it now I have a brand new factory Toyota door handle that works as intended I don't have to deal with the broken one anymore so now that the new door handles installed I'm gonna go ahead and test it I've got my door closed here's the handle and it works as intended. So if you look at the interior of my truck, you may notice that my glove box is missing. And the reason for that is I'm doing another video where I'm fixing the air conditioning in this truck. Now, normally the AC in this truck was extremely reliable and it blew ice cold air all day, every day. It was like a freezer in here, literally to the point that I would have to turn off the AC while driving sometimes in order to be able to warm up. And that's in South Florida, ambient temperatures of 95 to 100 degrees. Um, so the AC in here was actually very, very good. Unfortunately, when I purchased my Camaro 1LE, this truck did not get used very much because I started daily driving the Camaro. 
and from allowing it to sit, which is something you should never ever do with any car, especially if you want to have air conditioning that works, the air conditioning went bad. At some point, I tried to vacuum it out and just check for leaks and all that good stuff and recharged it and my compressor never kicked on. So this time around, I'm not playing with this heat nonsense anymore. It's so hot out here in South Florida that even the garage is sweltering hot. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm replacing my AC compressor. I'm replacing my expansion valve, the AC dryer, every single O-ring in the system. And I'm also going to replace the thermistor, the pressure switch, and even the AC amplifier board in order to make sure that I have a fully operational system with all brand new components and as much of that is going to be factory Toyota as humanly possible. The, the only non-OEM component that I will be using is the expansion valve and AC dryer and the reason for that is Rock Auto did not have the Denso one available and Toyota wants $85 for it and frankly I cannot see how it would be logical to pay $85 for that component. It's a very simple thing. Um, so. I got one made by Four Seasons that comes with the expansion valve, the AC dryer, and O-rings, and even the oil that I'm going to need, the compressor oil, the PAG 46. So I'm going to go ahead and use non-OEM there, but everything else will be OEM. And hopefully, once all of that is installed, my system will start to work properly, and I can enjoy ice cold AC in this truck. Okay, so I forgot to mention that I actually do have some extra non-OEM components and that is the suction and discharge hoses going to and from the compressor and that is because I could not find the original ones but I found them on Rock Auto from Four Seasons so those are also aftermarket as well. The design of one of the hoses, uh, the suction hose, it seems a little bit longer than the original but I was able to get it to fit it's probably because Toyota did change these lines um, on the later model year Tacomas in the first generation. So it's probably that they just make one for all of them. And amusingly enough, it does fit, so that wasn't a big issue. Now, I did replace all those components as I mentioned. And really the reason you haven't seen an AC video up until now is because I did the O-rings, the dryer, the hoses, the compressor, the expansion valve. And when I went to charge it, I still could not get the clutch to engage at the compressor, which means it's not getting power. I know for a fact that it works because I can jump the compressor's clutch over to the battery and it will automatically engage. Um, so really, it seems that the issue I have is an electrical issue. Now you can probably argue, man, you spent a lot of money uh, refreshing all these parts that it was probably just an electrical issue which is why I ordered the amplifier, the thermistor, and the pressure switch. Um, however, because I want the stuff to last for a good long time, I don't mind having to replace the componentry. I just do kind of wish that these systems were simpler to deal with, so I wouldn't have to deal with all the confusion of trying to figure out what's wrong from an electrical perspective. I've been getting pinouts and diagrams and taking readings with a voltmeter for a while and have yielded no useful results, which is why I literally decided, you know what, I'm just going to order a brand new AC amplifier board. And whenever I say AC amplifier to people who aren't familiar, they're like, why does the AC have an amplifier? So it's called that, but it's actually should just be called the AC control board because that's what it does. It controls the AC. It receives a signal when you push the button to turn it on. It receives a voltage from the pressure switch telling it that there's sufficient pressure in the line to kick on the compressor. And it also gets a signal from the vehicle's ECU, at which point it determines that it's safe to send power to the compressor clutch, and it does that, and that's actually what engages your compressor, which causes your AC to work. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten that to work for me, so I'm going to go ahead and replace these electronics. And in the odd event that that doesn't work, it means I have a broken wire somewhere, which means I'll have to start doing continuity testing, and I will not be a happy camper. But I digress. That's just, it is what it is. I'll have to do what I'll have to do because I need AC in this truck if I'm going to be driving it around in Florida heat and that's literally what it comes down to. I, I can't even drive to an autocross with the windows down. It's swelteringly hot. And my interior being all black is also not helping. Probably also going to upgrade to ceramic tints in the near future 
But first, I'm going to focus on the air conditioning, and then I'll move on to other things. Looking at my engine bay, there's also another couple of things that have been updated. You probably never saw this update, which is the battery bracket. It's a machine, the aluminum one that's powder coated gloss black. It's so much nicer than the factory rusty steel uh, junky little battery bracket. So I'm happy to have that. But in the background, those of you who are keen Toyota people might notice that that's not a Tacoma one. And if you really know your uh, MK4 Supras and SC Lexuses, then you realize that it's a master cylinder from one of those, specifically a Lexus SC300. Um, this was quite a conversion to do on the Tacoma. It involved changing out to the SC300 brake booster and master cylinder, and obviously re-bleeding my entire brake system, which I've done, and I have a separate video series for. That should be coming out soon. Uh, well, at least as soon as I can find the motivation to edit all of that because it's hours and hours of video. If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you're notified when I post a new one. If you have any comments, any feedback on how I can improve this, feel free to leave that in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching.